All right, everyone, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, my name is David Bledsoe. I'm a student engagement and communications manager at the College Fund. I welcome you all here today to talk about our Tribal College Blanket uh, Design Competition. We have some great guests from, uh, with us today from Pendleton Woolen Mills, and we'll be introducing them a little bit later. Uh, but uh, I hope you all uh, have come here just to learn about this great new program that we started last year. I'm going to start sharing my screen here. All right. And uh, we're going to discuss the, um, the design competition and kind of some of the aspects of the application, uh, how you can contribute some artwork to it, uh, and hopefully answer any questions you have. Uh, we're not going to officially start answering questions until later on uh, in the event. But if you have anything that you think of during uh, our presentation, just type that in the chat. You know, feel free to you know put a question in there, and we'll get to those later on in the event. So, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, we started this uh, contest last year with our great partner Pendleton. They have been uh, a partner of ours for over two decades, uh, helping raise money for uh, scholarships for Native students. Uh, you may have seen a lot of the blankets that they provide specifically for our Tribal College blanket line, uh, which we sell. But we started this contest last year really to give Tribal College students uh, a chance to kind of express their culture and art with us. Uh, and have the opportunity to have that transform into a blanket by Pendleton, which will basically be distributed across the world. So it's a really great opportunity. If you haven't been to the page yet, you can see at the bottom here, collegefund.org forward slash Pendleton contest is where you can get a little more information about uh, the contest and actually apply. But we'll kind of go through that a little bit by bit to talk to you about what the what the contest is, what you need to provide, and hopefully answer any of your questions. So, as I said, the American Indian College Fund and Pendleton Woolen Mills are basically providing this as an opportunity for tribal colleges students to kind of express themselves. Only current tribal college students are eligible to apply. Uh, each student can submit up to two original art designs. All of the blanket sales from, from the blanket that will be produced, plus all the ones that are in our line benefit uh, the scholarships that we provide. And you do not have to have any textile design experience to enter this contest. Uh, we accept all types of artwork. The main deadline you need to be aware of is January 15th. That is the last day that you can submit artwork for this contest. So that's just over a month away. Please don't wait too long <laughs> to, to get together your artwork and apply. Now, as I said, we're longtime partners with Pendleton. This is a picture of actually a lot, several of the blankets. We've produced many more than these, but this was actually from our recent um, annual report showing some of the recent designs that we have done with Pendleton. Uh, basically, we have worked with them every year to produce new blankets and designs with a lot coming from either native artists or students. And that has resulted uh, in funds that were raised over $1.6 million to support native students. So it's really important to understand that, you know, what you're doing, what you're submitting to is not only gives you a chance to win a scholarship, but is supporting a lot of other students through the sale of the blanket that you would be submitting a design for. Um, let me go over those contest prizes with you now. So we'll select three top winners. Uh, the grand prize is for a $5,000 scholarship from the college fund, $2,000 in cash, and then six of the blankets are, that are produced of your design. The second place winner would receive a $2,500 scholarship and $500 in cash. And the third place winner would receive a $1,500 scholarship and $250 in cash. And all of the submissions that we receive are awarded by a committee of native artists 
and College Fund and Pendleton staff. And I'm gonna give Pendleton a chance to kind of talk a little bit more about who it is that reviews all of the submitted artwork and how they select uh, a design because there's a lot of elements that go into that. Now, this is kind of a screenshot of the actual page, uh, the contest page. This is just the top section. You can see there's actually a little link here to our webinar today. And uh, hopefully by tomorrow or Monday, that will change to a recording of this event if you want to review it again or share it with anyone else. Uh, basically, the application is very simple, just kind of all the basic information. And then it's going to have a, a section for you to kind of describe your design a little bit more. So as I said, this uh, application is located at collegefund.org forward slash Pendleton contest. As I mentioned before, you can submit any form of art that you like because uh, as Pendleton will talk about, they do a lot of work even with um, things that may seem to be a little bit more like a blanket, um, like a digital artwork or a drawing or something that's more 2D. They can really translate any type of art or design into a blanket design. So you can you can send us digital designs, drawings, paintings. If there are crafts or traditional crafts that you do, sculpture, pottery, anything that you can make, you can, even if it's not a 2D thing that you can easily scan in or take a picture of, you can just take a picture of that and upload it as your submission. So don't feel limited that you can only do, you know, just a 2D drawing or a digital design to submit or produce an actual blanket. That is not required. We wanna see basically any type of inspiration that you're providing, especially those that are informed by your culture and experience. And that's the last part that I wanna talk about before we get into talking a little bit more about our last year's winner, which is the biggest part of this application that's on this page. It's gonna ask a lot of you know normal detailed information, but the biggest part is describing your design and what goes into that. Uh, we had a lot of people last year who submitted designs and didn't tell us anything about them, why they created that art, what the meaning is behind it, if there's things in their life that informed that. So that is probably the, one of the most important, if not the most important part from the actual artwork that you need to spend some time on. So talk about the process and the materials that you use to create your design especially if it's something that uses mixed media or other forms of art, describe that to us in what it took. Uh, talk about the meaning, about what that means to you personally, or if there's specific themes in there that are expressed. Uh, and when we share a little bit about our 2020 winner, uh, you'll see some of those things that are, were expressed in her design. Talk about influences, uh, things that influence your design, whether that's other artists, if there's cultural themes from your tribe or areas of the country that you're from, please tell us about that. And then also tell us your story, the story that you are telling. If it's your personal story, if it's the story about your tribe, your community, uh, things that you've encountered in your life, tell us those stories. You know, don't, don't skimp on, you know, just assuming that that's not important. We want to know everything that kind of goes into your artistic design. So our 2020 winner was uh, Deshauna Anderson. Uh, she is a Little Bighorn College student. And this is her design here, uh, Courage to Bloom. And we actually have a video of her uh, talking about her design and also how she went about her application process. And I hope this will give you a little bit of insight into why her design was a winning design. Uh, and then after we share her thoughts, um, our great partners at Pendleton will talk more about the process uh, for not only the, the application, but how they translate things and what it means to have a piece of artwork translated into a blanket design. So let's play Deshauna's video now. I wanted to learn more about my culture and my language. And so 
I transferred to LBHC and they have a lot of um, cultural classes where you can learn your language. You can learn like our designs on certain items. Like you can look at old photos. And I also wanted to learn more about my family history. Take your time and reread the competition guidelines. Um, figure out what, what the guidelines are asking for and what you can put in that would be beneficial to that scholarship or whatever you're applying for just figure out what they want and then add add your add your uh, add your style to it and be honest about what you want to what you want to say and what you want to present and my dad um, he always says do it so you don't have to do it a second time or if you do have to do it a second time keep keep trying keep trying until you you feel like it's good that it represents yourself and what you want want it to represent some people they would say that when you make designs on a computer it's not real art but it's whatever uh expression you're gonna like you want people to see so i would textiles if you haven't tried it as an artist like just keep your field open to anything. Our community, our environment, our landscape, it really comes into play as not just for me as an artist, but for like other artists as well. Um, when they're making it, like what they're around, it goes into what they produce. I hope that whoever is able to like put on the design or wear it or use it to stay warm, I hope that they just get comfort from the design and I hope it makes them feel good because then when they wear, I want good thoughts to go into it and I want them to be happy to be alive today. And I'm excited for people to wear it or and even put it on their horses. And I'm excited to put it on my horse too. And just even just to be able to gift it to someone too. When everything's getting cold, you get warmth from from just like acts of kindness like that. And Thank you for everything. Shout out to Pendleton and shout out to American Indian College Fund and everyone who's helped me out here. Um, thank you. I want to thank Deshauna for that. Unfortunately, she couldn't be with us today, but she wanted to record those things. Just kind of talk about what her journey was through that. Uh, we also have another video on our social media where she talks a little bit about what the design means and, and, and what informed that. Um, but now I want to pass it off to our great partners at Pendleton. They are going to talk a little bit more about how they've worked with the College Fund and what it means to select a uh, design that um, people want, <laughs> that people want to buy and share and enjoy. Uh, and how they translate those designs. And also they'll talk a little bit about even how they translated the design with Deshauna and with other recent artists. So I think that is, is it Kathy or Amanda who's starting? <laughs> um, I will jump in as I'm gonna share my screen, but Kathy's actually the first one to start speaking, I think. Okay. Yes. okay. <laughs> we'll do a quick I'll introduction. <laughs> Well, I'll pass off to Kathy then, uh, right. with Pendleton, and she will get things started. Thank you so much. We're so happy to be with you guys. Um, I'm Kathy Monahan. I'm Director of Marketing Communications, and joining me is Amanda Coppa. And as why don't you oh, introduce yourself? I was going to say, uh, uh, I run up uh, run the home division at Pendleton, so I'm the senior merchandise manager. And we were really fortunate last year to be able to present this for the first time. Um, and so we're back virtually and we're doing a similar presentation, but I'm gonna start by telling you a little bit about Pendleton. Uh, I, know, I think a lot of people know some things about Pendleton, but I'm gonna give you a little short um, introduction to who we are as a company. Um, and also, um, you know, some things you might not know, but, you know, here at Pendleton, we really believe in the strength of stories. I think I'll wait till Amanda's ready. What? <laughs> but you know, uh, this will do. Yeah. You know, <laughs> okay. and when Dave was talking about what to submit, I mean, the we cannot emphasize too much about stories, and the reason is is that um, we know from our own experience that it helps uh, connect people to our product. 
but also our our customers really do love the products the stories behind the products and that isn't um strictly related to just the blankets it's all of our products so we never um we never really think about the products as 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 being alone they always have a story that's attached to them so you know the other thing about um connecting our products and the stories is that it actually connects the creates a relationship so that's really reflected in our vision statement which is that we create quality products that embody craftsmanship, enrich lives, and connect generations. You know, one way that we connect generations is with family ownership. Uh, some of you might not know, but Pendleton's still a family owned and run business. We're actually a fairly small company. Um, you know, we are, it's an unusual day. We, uh, it's unusual in America actually to find a company that's lasted for six generations. You know, and, uh, Pendleton started in 1863 with a British weaver who came to Oregon as a young man. His daughter um, and her three sons opened a mill in Pendleton, Oregon in 1909. Um, at that time, believe it or not, there were a thousand woolen mills in the United States. Um, that's amazing. You know, it's so different now. There's only four left, and that includes our two mills here in the Pacific Northwest. You know, the, the mill that they opened in Pendleton housed a very new, for the time, jacquard looms, okay? And those looms are capable of weaving just amazing, amazing complex designs. So Pendleton looked around for customers, you know, and we looked first to our neighbors in Oregon. Um, the mill is really able to produce complex and beautiful weaving. Um, and then in our neighborhood also were the wool growers who we still buy from some of the wool growers we buy from we've been buying from them for 100 years so these are family run farms that we still buy their wool crop from so we also then we saw that we had the raw materials we had our customers near us so we continued the production of trade blankets uh, for the for the tribes in the Oregon region. Um, and then later on it expanded across the country. But you know, the blankets are were a part of commodities at that time. They were just, you know, sought after in the trading posts, along with saddles and coffee and tobacco and you know, flour. The Pen Pendleton blankets were a commodity there. Um, and they would have been traded for for handmade goods or furs. Um, but you know, they were really designed to attract the eye of our customer, which is the Native American customer in the trading post. So all along, right from the beginning, we were looking to attract the eye of the customer. So there were a lot of other trade blanket companies at the same time as us, but the way that Pendleton competed for a share of this very uh, valued business was on quality and design. So rather than just the basic low end blankets that would flooded the market, um, we made thick, durable fabrics, and rather than just using the stripe uh, designs that were pretty common, you know, from Hudson Bay forward, um, we sent designers down to do market research, find out what colors people liked, what designs people liked, and then come back and design into those tastes. And, you know, we still do that every season. So our teams, they preview the line with our largest customers, and we listen for feedback. Um, and you know, truthfully, we get feedback every day on what sells. If a customer wants purple, we add more purple. If they pass over a design that we absolutely love, it gets dropped. So the line continues to be shaped by the eye of our customer, really. And it's the case with a lot of the communities and lines that we um, have in, in the company. You know, we make a lot of blankets for customers and they have really varied taste. Um, one of our mainstay products is just a solid or a plaid bed blanket. And we base, um, you know, we base those on just home decor trends. These are utilitarian blankets that last for decades and keep you comfortable. They're not fancy, but they're a great product. So, you know, our relationship with each of these customers is key, you know, talking to them, asking their likes and dislikes, and the designing are very best for them. Um, it, you know, it's interesting how many versions of Pendleton there are out there. You know, we have a lot of different communities. Our Southern California customer um, is, to them, Pendleton means an ombre plaid and a board shirt. 
You know, we've been making these for almost 100 years and we're honored to have dressed generations of Latinx customers in these shirts. Other generations of other customers have grown up with the park blankets and with camp blankets and rustic plaids are part of their memory of the outdoors. And that connection goes back to our first park blankets in 1916, the year that the National Park Service opened. So to this customer, Pendleton means stripes and plaids. Um, so our, our traditional women's wear customer, you know, she likes wool suiting and our mill continues to innovate with that fabric, even making stretch wool. So, but what connects all of these communities is a respect for really quality product, a great design, but they also like a connection to past generations. So, you know, as a company founded by a craftsman, you know, our focus has always been on making great products that meets our customers' needs and matches their tastes. So, you know, we, um, we create our best um, for our different communities and we work with a variety of philanthropic partnerships as well. So um, we have already mentioned the college fund. Obviously, that's why we're here going back about 20 years. Um, I want to talk to you about a couple of other partnerships we have, just so you get to know who we are as a company. We also partnered with veteran organizations, and we donate a portion of the sales for the Grateful Nation blanket to a, an organization called the Fisher House, which helps families of um, military personnel who are hospitalized. Um, we designed this very special edition of the Chief Joseph blanket um, to support um, access to health care for Native American women in our uh, local community. Another um, new series, the Preservation Series, it celebrates traditional weaving uh, designs and it supports Native American arts education with the Center for Southwest Studies. Um, and then our partnership with the National Park Foundation has raised nearly a million dollars for park restoration projects in the Grand Canyon and um, in Glacier National Park. A new project this year is uh, we're helping to fund the Smithsonian's uh, Native American Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. with this beautiful blanket that's just launched just recently. And then another new blanket, um, the Wildland Heroes, a uh, favorite of so many people. This contributes to the Wildland Firefighters Foundation to assist with um, injured uh, wildland firefighters and their families. So that's just a little bit about Pendleton's history and our connections in our community. Um, Amanda's gonna cover some details about um, this exciting project that we're working on. Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm happy to jump into the design portion and how we're going to approach design uh, for commercial products, so blankets and other products that we sell, and what we're going to look for in submissions. So I know David touched on this, too, in his part, um, designs that tell a great story visually. So design should be appealing without having to know the story behind it. Um, it allows people to create their own narrative and the story will add an extra special layer of meaning to the design and to the product. And that's really important when it comes to gifting um, and just the overall connection to the blankets. And also looking for commercial, commercially viable subject matter in design. So really important is that the blanket has a positive message that customers will want to own for a really long time and pass down to generations, um, that it has accessible subject matter that customers can understand and relate to and either own themselves or gift it. And then global appeal. Um, we wanna keep the audience as large as possible because obviously the more blankets we sell, the more funds we can raise for scholarships. So. We sell our blankets um, not only nationally, but in Europe, Japan, um, and all over the world. So um, definitely want to have appeal globally. And then also a design with versatile use is important. Um, our design or our blankets are fit into many interiors, you know, wall hangings over the sofa and the bed. So throughout the home. They're also used as in robing ceremonies and um, gifting appeal. So they come in that classic Pendleton blanket box, you know, that people, people will keep these blankets in those boxes for a long time. Um, so just very easy to gift and give. So now jumping into how we will review designs and then the evolution, evolution of the 
design process to take it from artwork, um, any kind of media into a woven textile. So um, also David covered this too, just any kind of materials or any medium of art that can be translated, um, pottery, glass, beadwork, kind of anything. We've gotten um, like scratches on the back of a napkin for, <laughs> for concepts before, but any, you know, obviously fi files that are more detailed and um, laid out are much, much more helpful. So it's, it's fun to be able to uh, get all these different kinds of mediums and then see the, the translation into a woven textile. That's, that's really what I enjoy um, in my job. And this is just um, a slide of examples uh, that we've used for inspiration in the past. Um, again, textiles, pottery, glass, um, lots, very versatile. So anything we can um, translate. And also, so once that piece of art is complete, you know, a high quality digital file submitted to us um, in any one of these forms, we are, we're flexible, but once we get that digitally, we'll take it into our um, textile weaving software to translate it and, um, which actually takes me to the next step, which is the collaboration. So once we have that file and our design team and fabric teams kind of analyze it, it's really a, a balanced collaboration between us, our mill capabilities and the artist to take the design from the file that it was, you know, the digital file, the, the piece of pottery and convert it to a layout that'll fit in our um, 64 by 80, so it's kind of a small twin blanket. And um, excited to share. So these are a bunch of examples of, you know, original uh, media that we received. So Deshaunas, for example, was a digital file. The image in the center is what our CAD artwork, artwork looks like. So this is something that we get from um, our fabric team along with yarns and our available palette. And so once we kind of work this out in our on our end, we send it to the designer, you know, they get some feedback to us. And once everything has the green light, we'll go into sampling and, and bulk production. So the image on the right is going to be your photographed blanket. So really taking it and um, within our limitations, what we're able to execute. Um, so her, her original file has some color striping horizontally. And we had limitations there with the way yarns cross. So we were able to work with her and um, come to this other colorway. And it was just, a, again, a very collaborative process. Here's Pathway that we worked on with Funky Echo Hawk. And again, that was a college fund blanket from a couple of years ago. Um, he submitted a digital media file. You can see kind of the color differences from the original into our CAD form. And then once it's woven, you know, it really kind of executes with some more texture throughout. Uh, here's an example of a painting that we received by uh, Jim Yellowhawk. And so there's a lot of colors since we're limited on colors, again, that stripe horizontally. We actually took those, the red, the black, the white, and the yellow and put them as bands throughout the blanket. So um, this is a great example of how you can kind of translate it and get creative. And again, partnering with the artist and then how a jacquard loom um, ha really has two distinct looks in one blanket. So your face in reverse, it's basically the photographic inverse, um, which is a, an awesome feature because you can have two blankets for in, in one. And he was actually our legendary artist. And so this collection also includes his design translated into a coffee mug. Here is a Dale Chihuly blanket. So we've worked with Dale for years and years, and I think we're on number 22 of blankets where we're translating his glass sculptures um, into a 2D. And then so many details, again, just kind of refining within our limitations, lots of back and forth with their team and the artist. And then you got you on the right, you have your executed woven version. So you can definitely see similarities there. And um, Side by side, it, it executed really well. And here's a fun one. I always like to cover this one just to show the true um, collaboration. There's, there is a lot of back and forth and it may take one or two CAD submissions or you know up to 13 um, 
to get it right because we really want to execute the artist's vision. And again, the, the limitations with our looms and color placement and fine details we have to take into account too. So this was the blanket for the College Fund's 25th anniversary we did with Diani Whitehawk. And the blanket that you saw with Kathy's uh, philanthropic tie-ins was a painting by Harvey Pratt. Um, and we had to, again, take some liberties. You'll see how we took the colored hands and put them into bands on the top and bottom and you know, created a patriotic look to it to tie back to the Veterans Memorial and weaving techniques and limitations. We got really creative here and it was a fun, fun collaborative process with him. So those are some examples of how we would take any form of art and just work with our expert teams and with the artists communicating every step of the way. And, um, and you know, if a blanket sample comes in and something didn't execute right, we can make another tweak before we go into full on production. So, so I'm gonna toss it back to Kathy as she's in marketing, because that's in the, once the blanket's finalized, we get to start talking about the design and the artist um, next. Thanks, Amanda. You know, it's always fun to see how um, we've mentioned that it's a collaboration. It's so fun to see how the work that starts in one medium becomes this three-dimensional object. It's so fun. And also, it's it, it really comes to life. Um, our teams are, are very talented, and they are very good at translating one thing into these blankets. So um, with each of the products, you know, we were talking about the story. Um, and, you know, we really want to make sure that everybody understands how we tell the stories then. So each blanket in the college fund comes with a custom label um, that, you know, is the name, has the name of the blanket on it, and then also a series of hang tags. You know, when we do this with each of our products, really, a lot of them have hang tags like that. But with the college fund, um, there's a couple of stories. The, the blanket pattern will have a story and they'll also have the designer's name and then there's a college fund story so these these blankets get very special labeling you know connecting them with the with the um the um, collection and then also a bit of the history and you know what our customers really really value that part and we know that because when they lose the tags they call us because they want a replacement tag. So um, we do work with a, we have some constraints. Um, you can see that the tags are a certain size. And so the story can only be a certain number of words actually. So we'll take the story that you tell us and we'll have a copywriter in touch with the artist who'll talk through the story, find out you know what are the real key parts and then craft a, a, the, the final tag that will go um, onto the blank. It also has to be translated into French. So we have a number of, of, of you know, word limits, things like that, that are all very mundane, but they are actually, they wind up being important um, in that, um, you know, our story has to be concise enough to fit onto a physical tag. But it's really fun when this all comes together, you know, and um, the story, that connects the artist and the blanket are all come together into one little product. So it's really great. Um, just to let you know, the blanket will be featured in our print catalog. So the home catalog that's mailed to a million people or so, it'll be on the website. With a, and then we also um, have started using photos of the designers featuring them um, in our wholesale materials and then also on our website and our print materials. Um, so that, you know, we're really looking to actually promote the artists as well. So we do tell the story of the artists, who they are, what their background is. Um, and these are the artists we're working with for this year coming up. Um, you know, we really hope to create an, another level of meaning and connection with the product. You know, we're thrilled to be able to work with students here um, and, and also to support the college fund in this way. So um, yeah, it's very exciting. I think Amanda's gonna wrap up with some other little bits and pieces on the judging, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll just uh, jump into my development and planning calendar. I know it's a little, I actually haven't updated this version into uh, 2021 into our 2022 blanket, uh, but just to really to give this gives you an idea of all the steps that go into you know adding one blanket into our line. So there's development with sampling and set it up for production 
in that whole portion, which is about an 18 month process. And then simultaneously marketing's working on those tags that Kathy mentioned. And then, you know, once we're ready to do the press release and all that comes later too. And finally sales is showing this blanket, you know, kind of at the same time, once we have samples to at trade shows, and then it launches on our retail site and in-store events. So there's a lot of steps and a lot of action that happens with the blanket, but um, it, it, it falls in line. So we call it, this is the 2021 blanket contest. However, it'll be for the 2022 Pendleton College Fund blanket. So um, it can get a little confusing as to what year we're actually working in, but we'll stick with 21. <laughs> um, and then that just takes us to my last slide here, just to give everyone an idea of the, ju the ju judging criteria that Kathy and I um, came up with last uh, go around when we were working with our committee and um, looking at all the submissions. So here is, um, you know, the, really the five points that we're looking at. And again, our committee last year had um, two native artists. I had Bunky Echo Hawk, who did the pathway, I had Tracy Jackson, who's a designer at Nike and also did uh, College Fund Blanket, and members from Wine and Kennedy, as well as a native educator, and then our Pendleton um, designers as well. So everybody's kind of getting their eyes on it. And it was, it was such a fun process. And so really, making the criteria and um, kind of scoring these was really helpful so that um, we were able to narrow it down because it actually was really, really hard. So we're looking at the quality of the design. You know, are these figures or subjects drawn well? Is, are you considering the entire area of the blanket? Again, that proportion um, is gonna be a 64 by 80 inch blanket. And are the elements of design and principles of design considered? Kathy, feel free to jump in if um, you want to elaborate on any of these as well. Um, originality, super important. We want it to be from the artist's point of view, not something that we kind of see out there a lot or um, just a very unique original design, um, bringing their own point of view. And then I think I touched on this a little bit earlier too, that having a positive message, really uplifting and inspiring, you know, especially with everything going on, we all we all really need that and to be able to connect to a blanket even more so because of the message is just a wonderful um, feature. And you know, I want to jump in here because yeah. um, one of the things about Deshauna's um, design that stood out, well, and just to let you know, we had so many good submissions and it was a delight and um, also really hard in terms of judging it. Mm -hmm. So it was really a great, uh, problem to have with so many good designs. But Deshonda's was one that kind of just lifted up a bit in that not only was it beautiful, but you know, there was a great thoughtful story behind it. And there wasn't just like, oh, everything's great. There was weight to the story. There was about challenges and overcoming things. And, you know, she was able to um, address it in a really positive way, but it wasn't like just, um, you know, everything's fine. It was like serious messages. And um, it was one that you, we felt people would be really happy to own because it brought that um, hopefulness and positive messaging, you know, home with you. We saw some amazing, very serious, um, really moving designs, but we weren't sure if they would be something that we could actually make commercial. They were much more like really serious fine art pieces, which were amazing and we loved them. But, um, you know, Deshauna's was that great balance between great design, really good subject matter, and then um, presented in a positive way. Right. Yeah, that appeal will really kind of tell how long the blanket stays in our line, too. We've had um, several blankets in our college fund collection in over 10 years. And so, as it continues to sell well, we'll keep it, you know, 70% of our blanket line is carried over um, annually. So really strong designs. So yeah, and then um, I touch on this too, global appeal and accessible subject matter. How will, we want many people to connect to the story and the image of the design. And then again, just really pushing for the appeal of the story, engaging and connections. So that's the criteria we're looking at. Each one is um, judged on a scale of one to five. And um, 
that, yeah, well, we're going to work and find a new committee this year, likely. Uh, we don't know who that is at the moment, but it'll be a diverse team of artists, um, representative from the College Fund, representatives, representatives from Pendleton. So I'm really, really excited. Yeah. It was a high point last year. It really was a high point when they all came in and we got together and... Um, yeah, when yeah, David told us how many submissions we're like, oh, let's get yeah. ready for this. <laughs> yeah. So, um, David, was there anything else to go over before we go in Q and A? No, no. Uh, if anyone has any other questions that you haven't posted in the chat already, uh, please do. Um, I, I would like to to mention again, you know, like you mentioned with Deshauna's the story that she shared. Um, one of the things that was really on her mind was uh, missing and murdered indigenous people. And that is what her, her design is based upon, which is like Kathy said, is a very serious subject, but she looked at it in a way of generations and healing and learning and what that means. Uh, and if you go through and, and watch that other video or you go on to, even onto the Pendleton website and look at the description of the story, the way in which she does that is um, very open. Um, uh, it's very inviting. It's, it's talking to people about the seriousness, seriousness of it, but not in a way that is um, defeating. Uh, it, it's in a way that's like blooming. It's, it's you know, that courage to bloom, bringing things to a new light. So obviously that's a very serious subject matter. Um, we're not necessarily looking for something serious with it. You know, we want to know your story and what you're going through. When we work with our students, uh, whether they're filling out a full circle application or they're a student ambassador of ours or anything of that nature, the story that they're telling about their own circumstances, what they're going through, what's important to them, what's important to them about their culture, the way that that's supported them, those are really the most important things for us to hear from you, you know, and to have you express in your artwork. So, like I said, it doesn't have to be a really serious topic, but the way in which you talk about it and the meaning that it has for you, that is important. And we definitely want to know that. So, like I said earlier <laughs> in the application process, there's all those little things about your name, address, what school you go to and all things in that nature, but spend most of your time other than on your artwork on talking us through how you developed it, what it means to you, and what your story is. Those are really the most important things. So I hope that this was very helpful to you. I haven't seen a lot of additional questions. One that we did have, um, and we get got a lot of questions about this, um, we had over 20 travel colleges that had students submit last year. And I think we had, was it over 40? 48. 48. Yeah. So 48 submissions. Each student can submit up to two designs. We didn't, most of our students only submitted one last year, but we had a handful that submitted two. So you can submit up to two pieces of artwork. You can give completely different descriptions and go into those for those. But we had, we had over 20 tribal colleges that were representative. Uh, and like uh, Amanda said, 48 designs that were submitted. There were a lot more people that submitted that weren't eligible though. So this is only open to current tribal college students. Uh, if you do not know about the tribal colleges that the American, Col uh, American Indian College Fund works with, I would highly recommend to you to go to our website, collegefund.org, go to our tribal college page and learn more about those institutions. Most of them are located either on or near reservations. They provide a really essential and critical culturally appropriate way for students to get an education or to start their educational journey. Some of them are two-year schools, some are four-year schools, some even offer graduate programs. We have a lot of students uh, that submit, uh, there are uh, students at the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe, but you do not have to be an art student to submit either. Uh, that's one thing I didn't specifically call out before, but you don't have to have a degree, you don't have to have a, you know, any pedigree or certifications or anything of that nature. Uh, you can just be, you know, expressing your own artistic, you know, um, you know, ingenuity in, in coming up with your design. So uh, if there aren't any other questions, um, I would like to thank Kathy and Amanda for being with us today. Like, 
like they said, they're working at a global scale to <laughs> share blankets and, and market them. And, and, and we really are thankful for uh, the support that they give to the college fund. So thank you both for being with us today and for sharing more about the process. Absolutely. It's been a delight. Yeah, one of definitely one of my favorite projects. You know, I designed yeah. help uh, the whole line, you know, anything from towels to bedding to mugs, but you know, the college fund collection is very, very, very special. So and every year it's like, oh, that's a good one. It's gonna be a great one. And it was so fun to see Deshauna's uh, come off the looms and it was just so exciting to see it in real life. So it was great. Yeah, I I know our staff was absolutely thrilled when we saw <laughs> the final version of that. And um, you can order, I, I will encourage you to order uh, the any of the blankets from our line that are still available. Not all of them are available. They do no. retire eventually. <laughs> but Deshaun is, I think is available for pre-order. For pre-order right now. Right, right now. So it won't actually be available till sometime in, in the spring next year. Yeah. But you can pre-order that right now. But a lot of our blankets are still available to order. We encourage you to do that. Check them out. If you're thinking about designs that you know you want to make, maybe you can find some inspiration there as well too. There, there's some yeah, really- Yeah, and do go read the stories behind the blankets too, because that's yes. really great. Um, yeah, and you know, as we move forward, we're more interested, uh, it's, it's more possible for us to actually put a video along with the, the printed tags. So we're hoping, you know, yeah. as things move forward, we'll be able to have the artists tell their own stories like we did with Funky on his. And it was a great, it was a great backstory to hear. And it's like, oh, now I want that blanket too. So. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and a lot of those designs are very different from every other design. There's, there isn't just a, a sameness to when you look across our line. And, and that's one of the things I will encourage any of you that are thinking of submitting to is that you don't have to fall into a specific category or look. We want to find things that are beautiful, but also tell a story. And yep. unique. Yeah, yes. exactly. Sets it, sets it apart from other blankets and other stories that we're already offering. So mm -hmm. Maybe there'll be someone from the next generation who will come up with something just really fantastically different, but also connecting, you know, that connects with yeah the stories so don't limit yourself so. very exciting well, if yeah if there's nothing else uh, again i want to thank you both for being here today thank you for everyone who came on to this uh session this recording like i said will be up on the application page feel free to share this with anyone we'll be sharing it on social media as well and if you have any questions reach out to us at the college fund or go like i said go directly to the application page there's a lot of those answers that are on there as well too so yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. Looking forward Have to seeing them all. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.